Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I definitely hope your week is going better than mine has so far. It's always fantastic, you know, first thing on a Monday morning, you go to make some art prints to find out your printer is dead, and then spend the remainder of the morning frantically scrambling around trying to find a suitable printer replacement that's not gonna take a month to get here. So that I think for now has sorted itself. The new printer is supposed to come tomorrow, so I'm sure that will be part of this studio vlog. But yeah, that was more drama on a Monday than I needed, and I'm good for the rest of the week. So I think because of that, the rest of this week is going to be pretty just chilled out. I do really want to organize some paint stuff because I now have a bunch of oil paint that is still on my desk, and I kind of really need to find a good home for it. I know I did look up just, you know, paint tube storage because it's not really something I've ever needed to look into because I put all of my watercolors in pans and then I just have the tubes like in a container in a drawer. But now that I have like actual paint tubes that I want to be grabbing from and they're significantly bigger, like this one is you know, the mid-size one amongst the oil paint tubes that I have. So I did consider like creating some sort of storage solution, which I haven't completely ruled out, but it's like, just be a normal person and put them in a drawer or something and don't try and like complicate things. But of course, designing art supplies is a quite a fun hobby for me. <laughs> yes, hopefully the remainder of this week will go far more smoothly than it has started. <laughs> I figured organizing paint was a pretty safe task to work on. So as you can see, Paint tubes, there's even more in there. Uh, paint tubes kind of taken over the desk right now. So what I'm going to look at is something that I've wanted to reorganize for quite a while. It is this drawer. So this right now has a bunch of acrylic paint that I don't really use. Not that I want to get rid of it, but I do want to reorganize it to be more just condensed. Like in here we have a quite a large set of the Liquitex Basics, I believe are what these are. Yeah. Um, set of Liquitex Basics and they're just not really like, they could be more condensed. And I have these like giant um, acrylic paint tubes from various projects, some bottles that really don't need to stay in this drawer. Um, so I'm going to figure out some sort of drawer organization, probably going to 3D print something because I'm going to get it done faster and it can be far more specific, like I literally can have it fit the drawer perfectly. So yeah, that's going to be the first task is figuring that out so I can get it printing and then go from there. So here's what we're rolling with for at least the start of the drawer reorganization project. I 3D printed these cube organizers, so these two will fit perfectly in the drawer side by side. This isn't obviously going to take up the full drawer, but I figured I probably could fit most of these smaller tubes into these two containers, maybe even one, um, and just I really wanted to see how much I could fit in these, and so figured I would start here and then I can print more depending on the like sizes and configurations I think I'm going to need for the rest of the drawer. But I really like the bin idea because it means that anytime I want to grab paint I can just pull the entire bin out of the drawer and I don't have to like grab individual tubes if it was just like dividers. So I'm gonna start putting the tubes into these but what I think I'm going to do first is actually dot the tops of these tubes. It's something I'm honestly kind of shocked I never have done. Like most of the time I do you know, all of my gouache tubes and stuff have that like dab on the top of the lid just for more color accuracy, especially if I start putting these into these containers with the tube top facing upward, it's going to be a lot easier other than I'm sure that the colors on the actual tubes probably look nothing like the paint inside. So I'm going to do that to all of them first and then we will get to organizing them in these containers.
for the oil paint storage, I decided to go with a bit of a compromise idea where I would in fact agree to just put the paints in a drawer, but make some custom storage for them to go in said drawer. So I came up with what is essentially a paint tube palette tower. So they print individually, but they can stack within each other so that it can all fit together nicely in the drawer and take up less overall space because they're all stacked on top of one another. I decided to round the corners to match the other drawer organizers that I'd printed for the rest of the drawer. Nothing super fancy, but very practical. And here's how it ended up looking like printed. I ended up printing four of these layers, two to fit the larger oil paint tubes that I had, and then another two to fit the oil paint set that has the smaller tubes, which for the set, I actually cut the plastic insert that the set came in that kept all of the tubes nice and lined up. And so I cut it down to size so that it could slip into the tower to keep them all organized. And here is what the new drawer setup is looking like. So much better. There's just so much more room in this drawer now, thanks to these organizers. You can see, I don't know if I actually showed this in a video, but I realized when I was putting all of the paints together that I really didn't need the full second one. In fact, the remainder of the acrylic paints could pretty much fit in half of that size. So that's what I did. I printed a half one and I originally had two halves together here, but I realized that this would be a perfect place to put the larger tubes of oil paint as well as my solvent-free gel. In the front section here, you can see the oil tower, and then I have an extra tube of white as well as my linseed oil. The giant tubes of acrylic paint are in the back here, which is fine because I really don't grab for those very frequently, but when I do need them, you know, it's still really easy to get to, and if I can't really get to anything, I can just move all of these bins out of the way and get to them no problem. That is the new drawer reorganization. It looks so pleasant even to look at with all of the paint tube colors out and it's just going to be so much easier, especially, you know, I can just grab my oil paint tower out when I want to use it or even just, you know, unstack these and grab the colors that I want to mix up on a palette or whatever. Yeah, really happy with how that turned out. Say hello to the new printer. I'm not sure if anyone cares at all about different printers, but I did have an Epson Artisan 1430, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> hold on, but yeah, this bad boy. It did serve me well until it's untimely death on Monday. I did try and fix it. It's been a whole thing. I'm not gonna get into it, but it's discontinued now, which means a new print head, which is what I'm 90% sure it needs, it would cost more than the printer that I bought. So this is the new one. I think it's almost like the new version of it. They don't really make the artisan printers anymore, but it uses the same type of ink, like not the same cartridges, but the Claria HD ink sort of situation, which is like the closest sort of ink to archival that they really can make. It's a whole thing. There's a lot of reasons. If anyone's interested specifically about why I went with this printer other than it was one of the only ones that I could get, just leave that in the comments and I will answer you because I don't want to bore you all with a bunch of printer talk. Yeah, I'm gonna go set this up and so it's going to be out with the old printer and in with the new. Clearly it's quite a different shape. Honestly, this is a pretty, I feel like, unique shape situation for a printer. It also has this really cool texture that I'm probably never going to be able to show you on camera considering the lighting over here is terrible and it's a black printer. It definitely has the texture like it's not smooth plastic which is pretty cool and then you have this screen that pops up here and of course the back feeder situation thing which is what I'm going to be using all of the time because you don't really want really fancy thick expensive paper doing the whole gymnastics inside of the printer. Haven't tried turning this on yet, just got everything plugged in and you know where it should be. Uh, so I'm gonna go play around with this now and hopefully everything goes smoothly.
I'm pretty sure I said I wasn't getting too into the printer, but I really just had to talk about it because these prints I don't think have ever looked this good. They look incredible. It's really nice. I actually can select the exact paper that I use because I use an Epson Velvet Fine Art paper, so I'm not sure how much that's helping, but I'm just saying these look absolutely amazing. They look like exactly like they do in real life. And I also just had to show this because it honestly freaked me out the first time, but it is quite amusing. It has an electronic paper, like whatever you call that, sheet receiver, whatever. And so when you first go to print something, it of course expands itself and it freaked me out the first time it did it. I will also say the shape of this printer, like it is super flat on the top, is very useful to put slightly, you know, damp print sheets to dry as you're printing things. So not sure if that's its intended like design function, but it is super useful. So that is my very quick non-review of this printer. Just thought I would mention it since, you know, I was talking about having to replace mine. So, so far, so good. Very happy camper with this new printer. So I guess now I can go ahead and buy $200 worth of ink replacements for it. <laughs> So a bit of a side project that I've been working on is I designed and made myself some of these modular craft paint storage organizers. These ones are admittedly quite large like configuration wise but that's just because I have a lot of paint to store and I also know where they're going so I figured an 8 one was going to be good for me and I actually have a bunch of them right here already. This is what I kind of started with um, but I'm really obsessed with how these are turning out and they take up like no space. I replaced like one of those spinny Michaels things that was here and it just never really fit well there and I mean it really wasn't supposed to stay there permanently it just sort of <laughs> ended up being put there and I could never spin it and so I figured just coming up with something that takes up like half of the amount of depth um, would be a good idea and they fit the paint tubes absolutely perfectly uh, those ones aren't glued together yet but I've printed a whole bunch more here there's four of those eight hexagon ones uh, because I really want to replace this now since this set has worked out so well and these ones you probably can see here I'll move the camera over here so you can see better here you can see just how much wasted space there is with these cubby holes like I really like this unit and I'm definitely going to be reusing it somewhere for some organization purpose but literally this takes up like the same amount of space as that unit and I can hold like 25% more paint I'm pretty sure is what it ends up working out to like 25% more tubes bottles whatever you want to call those and these are also just the like typical two ounce craft paint bottles so this one I am actually going to glue together it does fit together like really snugly like you can see I just picked up all four units like no problem there um, I'm just paranoid that I'm going to like pull it apart by accident because I'm sort of that level of klutzy but of course the other thing is this was one of those accidental art supply makes to make my studio organization better and I could obviously make more of these if anyone was interested in craft paint tube storage organization. So I'd love to know any and all of your thoughts on that. I do know that they would not necessarily be this configuration. The six might work better or even the three so they're super modular for any one sort of space. Um, but yeah, just generally would love to know your thoughts on these organizers. I also very specifically designed it that the seams between the actual uh, pieces that are like attached to together so like these uh, walls are the same thickness as if you put together two units like this is a separate one uh, so it's all the same uniform width because that would drive me insane if it wasn't so the only thing that's thinner is any outer wall just wanted to mention that too that all of the walls are nice and even so they're really nice and uniform even when you're attaching multiple things together you probably aren't really going to be able to tell like you probably can't see there where the units uh, attach time to reorganize some paint
And there we have a new paint tube storage unit. You probably did see me using these like drawing clips just to clip it together when I was gluing it. That was honestly pretty much just until I had the weight of the paint on it. So if I did sell these and you wanted to glue them, not a big deal. <laughs> Maybe, you know, glue it flat first before you try and start putting paint on it five seconds after. This unit, as you probably can tell, is the more unusual paint in my collection. So we have the dragonfly glaze stuff. Is that what this is called? <laughs> yeah, the dragonfly glaze in various colors that I like putting into palettes and some like thicker glitters and then my brushed metallic paints that I like for prop making. Yeah, those are two sections of the studio redone, which honestly have been on my hit list for a while. So I'm glad those two areas are looking nice, new, and organized. I would really like to get to oil painting soon, but before I do that, I need to put this together because the oil paint project kind of depends on it. So this, as you possibly can tell, is a frame. I will lay out the pieces as they should be here. There, you can kind of get the idea there. Uh, but like I mentioned, I had a very specific project idea in mind that I wanted to do for my first oil painting project. And part of that was including the frame. So I decided to actually be reasonably smart for once and look at the frame that I might want to use for it before I actually started painting it so I could make sure it was the right size and everything. But that's when I realized that they don't really make large, like a Victorian baroque frames. And so I went searching, decided to look up my 3D print options, and this is what I ended up with. I was originally looking for like a rectangular one, but I saw this one and I just thought it's a a little more challenging because of, you know, it needs to fit within this frame, which is why I need to build it because I essentially need to make a template of the frame situation before I start drawing anything up. Uh, but I figured the extra work is probably going to pay off and be a really cool end result. So decided to go with the slightly more intense option. And honestly, these pieces look incredible. I did have to fight with a 3D model that I used for the frame and then cut it up so it would fit more easily on my printers. But yeah, this was the easiest and best way to get a frame that looked like this for me. And as I somewhat mentioned, I need to put this together before I can start doing anything so that I can create a comprehensive template to use for the oil painting. So that's going to be what I work on now. I'm going to start sanding the pieces down and then start actually gluing them together. This frame is seriously like the worst thing to try and film, but here's what it's looking like so far. I did get a few coats of the resin mixture on it just to smooth out all the different layer lines, but I really want it to set so that the glue can dry before I start like manipulating it and it like breaks on the seams uh, because I'm a little paranoid about it and I'm probably gonna figure out a way to like strengthen those areas a little. I did think about putting dowels in, but the frame really isn't that thick, but the size dowel that I could have fit in the frame wasn't gonna like help at all because of how thin it would have to be. Yeah, because I want this to sit for a bit, I think I'm gonna end the studio vlog here. I'm sorry, I know I don't normally leave projects like unfinished in studio vlogs, but you will see how this turns out in probably multiple other videos because of course this is for the oil painting that will become a video and it, you might see me work on finishing the frame up more on another studio vlog or something. But yeah, that's going to be everything. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.